Hi, I'm Bill Flanagan. I'm the conservation manager at the John Ball Zoo. And we're down here at uh, Pierce Cedar Creek Institute near Hastings, Michigan. Uh, and then this is the site of our releases for our head started box turtles. Uh, many of you are probably pretty familiar with box turtles and some of the threats that occur with them. They're really susceptible to predation from what we call subsidized predators. And these are predators that are on naturally high levels uh, because, of the, uh, because of the way that the environment has been altered by human habitation. So the population of turtles out here are really under a lot of pressure from predation from raccoons. So a strategy we've been using to try and combat that is head starting. We house the turtles at the zoo for about 10 months where they get plenty of food, lots of light and lots of warmth. And then at the end of those 10 months, they get a health exam from our veterinarian. He does x-rays and checks to make sure they're okay. And the x-rays help us double check to make sure that the bone density is great. Uh, so once they pass that, then they go, they're ready to be released out at Pier Cedar Creek. And for Faith, our partner with GVSU, to start following them in the wild. Hi, my name is Faith Kuzma and I am a master's student at Grand Valley State University and I am here working on the Head Started Eastern Box Turtles, but I focus on more of the field aspect of the project. And so after all of the head starting and the processing at the zoo, we do our own set of processing before we release the turtles. So each turtle is weighed and we take various measurements just to see how big each one is. And then we file each turtle on the shell in a unique pattern and that helps us identify what individuals we're looking at when we're out in the field. We also will attach a radio transmitter to the shell of each turtle and this radio transmitter just gets applied with some epoxy glue. It's a really lightweight transmitter so it shouldn't inhibit their movement through the woods. And this transmitter gives off a unique frequency that we can pick up using something called radio telemetry. And so when we want to re-find those turtles in the wild, we can hone in to this frequency and that will lead us to each individual turtle. Once we find the turtles, we collect various data. We're looking at their survival, their growth in the wild, their spatial use within their habitat and then also behavioral aspects of the turtle's life out in the wild to make sure that head starting doesn't have any negative impacts on them. This is only our second year doing the project, but we will have released 29 turtles into the wild by the end of this summer. And while this is only a two-year project so far, we're hoping that it's gonna have some really long-term impacts in that these individuals that we're releasing will be on this landscape for between 50 and 100 years.